Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be talking about some common types of polynomial functions, what they look like, what some characteristics about them are, things like that. So let's start by talking about a linear function. So a linear function is one that's typically in the form of f of x equals ax plus b. Notice how it's linear because it just has a 1 here or just an x. There's no exponent other than 1. That's our highest exponent there. Now, a linear function also looks like a line. Now, it can either be constantly increasing or it can go the other way and be constantly decreasing, but it's only going to do one of those things, and that's tied to our exponent there. So, when we have an exponent of 1 for our degree, then our function can only do one thing, increase or decrease. It can't do both at the same time. And so that's a really important thing to be aware of when we talk about linear functions. So they're always going to be either just increasing or they're just going to be decreasing. And that's kind of what a linear function looks like. An example of one that we might see is something like negative 3x plus 7. Okay, that's an example of a linear function. Let's talk about a quadratic function now. A quadratic function is going to be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, notice how our exponent here is a 2. Now, that exponent is super important as our degree there. Um, with a degree of 2, what that means is it can increase or decrease like two times. So in a linear function, it's either always increasing or always decreasing. In a quadratic function, it will increase at one point and then decrease at another. Now, a quadratic function is always U-shaped. It looks like this. And you can kind of see this idea that it's increasing on one side and decreasing on the other. That too tells us that it's going to switch from increasing to decreasing. And now a common example of a quadratic function here is y equals x squared plus 7x minus 2. Great. Okay, now a cubic function. Now a linear function has a degree of 1. A quadratic function has a degree of 2. And so a cubic function actually has a degree of 3. And so what this is going to look like, they'll keep getting a little bit longer, but we've got ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay, so notice how it gets longer here. A cubic function increases then decreases, then increases. And it can kind of go either way, decreases, increases, decreases, something like this, but it makes that unique pattern. Where notice how it's increasing or decreasing three times. Increase, decrease, increase, or decrease, increase, decrease. Now that's super important to be aware of. Our degree tells us how many times it's gonna turn, basically is what it's doing here. So linear function, never turns, it's always just going to increase. A quadratic function turns once, a cubic function you can see kind of turns twice, but an example of one is going to be something like this, f of x equals x cubed plus 3. Great. So remember that that b and c in this case equals zero, but it doesn't matter. As long as our degree is an x cubed, it's going to be a cubic function. Lastly, we have a quartic function, which is one with a degree of four. What those are going to look like is they're going to increase, decrease, increase, decrease, or increase, decrease, decrease, increase, like this, decrease, increase, decrease, increase. Ah, oh, sorry, they get a little confusing. So increase, decrease, increase, decrease. We can see that it's increasing and decreasing four different times. So it's either increasing, then it decreases, increases, decreases, but it's going to change what it does. And that's the cool thing about that degree four. So our example here of something that is a quartic function might be something like f of x equals 4x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 7. Fantastic. As long as the highest exponent is a 4, it is a quartic function. Okay, so let's take a second to look at different types of polynomials and decide which one is which. So we're just going to decide which one we have in each case. So with this first one here where our degree is 2, that means we have a quadratic. With this next problem here, we need to look at our degree. This one has a degree 4, so that makes this one a quartic. And then our last green one over here is this, and it has a highest degree of three, so that makes this one cubic. Fantastic. Okay, now let's take a look at the next ones here. As we're deciding. So this one, we need to decide if this is quad 
quadratic, a quartic, or a cubic. Now remember, when we're looking at them, that one that's going to be the shape like this, or we can count how many times does it increase or decrease? Well, it's increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. So because there's three increase or decreases, this one is going to be cubic. Let's take a look at this next one here. Now this one decreases one, increases two, decreases three, increases four. It's also got that kind of like W or U shape, which means this one is a quartic. Okay, let's take a look at our next one here. This one oh, decreases and then increases. It only does things twice, so this one is a quadratic. It's also that U shape. Quadratic. And this one here, decrease, increase, decrease, increase. That's four things. So a four move or a W shape is a quartic. And let's look at these last two really fast. We've got this one down here, which goes increase, decrease, increase. Sorry about that. Watermark there. So increase, decrease, increase. Because there's three pieces, this one is cubic. And our last one here, if we can get rid of all these papers all these little squares looks like this increase decrease increase so that one is also going to be cubic fantastic so that is kind of how we identify what type of functions things are please check out the next video in which we go over different characteristics of polynomial functions including things like turning points endpoints local minimums and maximums um, where it increases and decreases um, what the um, and results are things like that. So please check out the next video in which we discuss these common things about polynomial functions and their graphs.